It was his job to locate a drop zone. In the mountains? Mm-hmm. Needless to say, High Command always had ideas, but they weren't always good. Plus, no one had planned for those crosswinds flaring up. But our supplies were already in the air. He made a spur-of-the-moment decision? Pretty much, yeah. Although he described it with more, um, direct language. Adams, he went out alone. From the way he told it, he may as well have. No, he went along with some new recruits, local bunch. It was his job to show them the ropes. transport the aid themselves. There must have been a reason. Yeah, there was. A couple of weeks previously, guerrillas had ambushed a convoy. It was some dissident group out to sabotage the peace talks in Obama. Anyway, NATO intervened and the whole thing just blew up. A checkpoint was hit. Protesters were fired upon at the MOD. Yes, I, I, we were there. Uh, yeah. And you know how bad it got. Our movements were limited by the government. Exactly. And convincing anybody to reassign troops, to escort NGOs, just a total non-star. One of the drop zones available to Adams was out on the coast. Standing by. Ready. Waiting. Once he'd called in the airdrop, that was it. They just had to sit tight. Hope for the best. One thing I don't understand. What were they doing there, all the way up in the mountains? The town, Oreo Castro. This place has historic ties with the guerrillas. For years, people here would provide them with food, water. I see. The government responded by draining the swamp. And that involved sending soldiers? Yeah, coin ops. Adams and his guys were there to remind them of their R2P. Just a sec. I'm getting a bit lost in the lingo here. Hmm? Oh, gotcha. Uh, R2P is their responsibility to protect. Counterinsurgency can get real messy real quick. He was in charge of training. Laws of armed conflict, that kind of thing. Adams normally tossed out an orange smoke grenade, which marked his position for the pilot. drinking water. The rest were packed with rice and grain. Adam said to inspect each one individually. Later, we'd arrange collection.
As I recall, the bottles of purified water were fine. We'd been waiting on those for weeks. Now, the thing with airdrops, they're not exactly slow. Smoke, the noise of the plane, the pressure and the parachute, you're gonna get to notice. And when you're in the middle of bandit country, that's a problem. I've got a visual. Rifleman. 100 meters front. Get in that vehicle. Understood. Return to formation. Roger. Machine gun, 300 meters southeast. Moving. Reloading. I'm coming. Go. Sniper, 300 meters southeast.
Attacked. Yeah, from what I heard, it was pretty intense. I don't have the numbers, but maybe six or seven were killed. Medical items, you can imagine how pleased we were to see those arrive. So they landed safely? Yeah. Yeah, they were fine. Get in that vehicle. Roger. No can do. Standing by. Waiting. Petros, board that vehicle. Copy that. Standing by. It wasn't uncommon for the sacks of grain to split on impact, but that time, we got lucky. He didn't lose a single one. Thankfully, the rice seemed okay. And what happened when the supplies had been secured? Adams would fire a flare.
We'd spot it from the town and dispatch a truck. 